Let's begin. Kum Lenin Ablat Gemara. We are up to the Ayin Amen Aleph, the seventh Pedic. Says the Mishnah. It's a new Pedic, Pedic Hamadi. According to some, this should have been the sixth Pedic. According to others, it's the seventh, like the Mamma Gemara. We're continuing the idea where a, a man makes a vow towards his wife, or a, the woman makes a vow, a vow towards her husband. The only vows that the husband has a right to annul are those vows that affect him. Vows that affect him, he has a right to annul. Otherwise, if it's a private thing that's her own life, obviously he does not have any right to annul. So, and also we learned that if it's a vow against uh, something that the terrorist says that you have to, uh, that you have a commitment, you have an obligation, you can't make a vow to contract yourself out of that. Okay. Hamadis Ishte, somebody said that to his wife, Milahonus Loy, Adlamidjoin. He says, I don't want you to have any um, pleasure from me for 30 days. That means he cannot give her food, everything else. So the din is, Yamid Parnas. For the first 30 days, he sets up a third party, a Parnas, and this Parnas is going to provide for her. The obvious question is, it's like a shliach. So what's the difference if he's not allowed to? If she don't have any benefit from the husband, how can she have benefit from his shliach? So we're going to see in the Gemara later, the Parnas actually is not acting as a shliach. It's a special kind of a setup, as we'll see, that he's not officially representing the husband. Yes, Mekan, but if the vow is for longer than 30 days, then he can't live this way. It's not a way of living, so therefore he must divorce her and give her a ksuba. Actually, Machlek is restraining him whether you must or not. Uh, Chase is right here, says that you force him. He said, you know, this is not right. It forced him to divorce, to divorce his wife and to, um, and to pay out her ksuba. Um, other Hashem hold not that we force, but just saying that if he wants to divorce her, then he has to give her a ksub as well. Abihudai Mabuda says, be Yisrael. Abhuda says, if the husband is a Yisrael, which means that let's say he just we tell him you have to divorce her after a month, and he regrets it later on. Then why is he making this now? Obviously, he's angry. So if he comes down later on, he can always take her back. Okay. Then Khajish Echad Yakayim, one month they have to live together. But the Shnayim, if it goes into a second month, doesn't mean a full second month, it goes even a day into the second month. Then the Yoy Tibi thinks of it, then he gives it. But if he's a Koyin, and a Koyin, once he divorces his wife, he cannot take it back, then he needs more time to calm down. So Shnayim, we give him up to two months, Yakayim. We don't force him to divorce. But the Shalisha, once it's beyond two months, Yoy Tibi eating Suva. He has to divorce her and give her Suva. So it sounds more like places that you like, you have to, you compel him to divorce. What about Hamadir as Ishtai? Now, even though it says the same words, Hamadir as Ishtai, which actually talking about a case here, that she makes the nether. She may, we'll see later how we know that. She makes the nether against her husband, saying, um, and, and he has to substantiate it. He has to uh, agree. And we had before Machlekes, when she makes the nether and he agrees, who actually here is the culprit? Because her nether alone does not have any weight bearing only unless he, you know, within the first 25 hours consents to it. So we'll treat it as if it's his nether. So Ahmadir is Ishtay. He makes a nether. She's like, echem That there's one particular fruit that she is not permitted to eat from. Then you have to go out and give a, um, a ksuba straight away. <clears throat> Um, Rabbi Huda says, and here we don't see about 30 days, we'll see later. Rabbi Huda says, Be Yisro. if it's a Yisro, Yom Echad, we allow up to one day. Yekayim, they live together, Shnaim, but it goes into a second day, Yaitzim, the eating Suvi, has to the roster and give a Suvi. But a Kayin, again, we always give a, a little bit longer time for a Kayin, is Shnaim Yekayim, the Kayin, Shnaim Yekayim, Shleisha Yaitzim, Suvi. Here we don't need the full month because it's not a question of anger. It was her idea. No, but in the case where he made the nether, why would he make a nether? I don't want you to have any pleasure in me because he's angry, upset with her, whatever. But if she made the nether and he just agreed with it, it, it since he didn't initiate it, she did. There's no anger over here. So um, so therefore, it's a much shorter time. You don't need 30 days. One day is of sufficient. And uh, so again, I mean, who makes a distinction between a coin or Yisrael? Yisrael, one day, that's what we gave a coin because he can never take it back, can't change his mind. We give up to two days. Hamadir as Ishtar Shalit is Kashid Mehmakala meaning the same thing here applies. If he goes ahead and she, um, uh, she said, I don't want to take this kind of a few my you make sure I won't her, I won't have this kind of shua, and he supports her, you have to give her a ksuva again. And divorce her. Yes, he says the But Anis, if she's poor, she'll only need kids. If she's a poor person and he makes a net, it doesn't give a set time, he just says, I don't want you to put on this particular perfume anymore, then he has to divorce her and give her a ksuva. 
Um, but if he gives her a certain amount of time, so for 30 days, we say, you know what, let's wait for the 30 days and, then, and resume the marriage. But uh, we'll, we'll see later in the Gemara exactly how long we give time for. But if she is wealthy, then Shalai Shayim give 30 days. Um, why is that? So, so we'll see later. Her, the perfume, her perfume generally the lingers on, the fragrance lingers on for 30 days. So if she doesn't have new perfume for 30 days, it's not the end of the world. Beyond that, that we have to, um, we have to divorce her and give her a So the Gemara. First of all, he said, I don't want you to eat for, I don't have any benefit for me. The Kiva, the Mishubud love, since that she, um, since he, he's in, uh, obligated to provide food for her, Heichi Matsi Madala, how can he make a nether to, uh, to contract out of his obligation? Kol Kimine, he believed the Mavki Lola Shabude to cancel of an obligation that he has. But now, nah, didn't we learn if she says, Koinim She'eni Oisel Picha, she makes a vow, I will not, you will not get my earnings. Ain't it so half? He doesn't even have to know it because since she has an obligation to hand over the earnings to him, she cannot make a vow against her obligation. So the same thing, he has an obligation to feed her. How can you make a vow that he won't? Alma, what do we see from here? Keep the Mashab the license, she has an obligation of Lab Kol Kabine. She's not believed the Mavkila Shibuddha to cancel the Shibud. No, how can I say here? Keep the Mashubud law, since he has an obligation to provide for her, Lab Kol Kabine is not believed the Mavkila Shibuddha. He can cancel that Shibud. Ella, the Gemara says, since he can tell her, he has the right to tell her, he has a right to tell his wife, you know what, I'm not going to feed you, you go get a job, and whatever you earn is yours, and, and leave me out of it. Since he has a right to tell her, so he, there's a way, he has an option of how to get out of his obligation by telling the word for himself, so we're going to interpret his words, that when he said, I don't want you to have any benefit from me, what he meant to say was, go get a job, and, and take care of yourself. We're going to interpret his words as if he said to her, You go out there and you um, earn your own money. So in other words, so the Mars Machadish here, that if somebody says something that cannot be uh, fully understood, we're going to reinterpret his words. Even though we already learned before, Homachlik is Rameh, it says a person is not Maitzit Varul Vatola when he wants to give the Erech of a little baby under 30 days old, which he, there is no Erech, there is no value to it. So we interpret his words that he, meant, he just meant Sadaka. Um, it's not the same thing as we're doing over here because over there we're just interpreting. Here we're sort of adding words. He never said go get a job. We're sort of adding words, and even that we want to do. And he more doesn't like that, he must reject Because if so, then, then, then the same thing the other way around. If she makes a nether, since she, we learned that Huna said before, he had an argument of Huna Shlaki, the Huna holds, and that's not a locha, that she has a right to say to the husband, just like the husband can say to her, you get a job and uh, leave me out of the picture, she can say the same to the husband, you don't feed me, I'm going to take care of myself. So let's interpret why can't she make a vow that I, that I don't want to have anything to do with you? Um, why not? I, I don't want my, my, belong, my um, earnings to go to you since she has an option that she can say, I want to work and you don't feed me. So let's reinterpret her words. So that proves we don't reinterpret words. So what's the difference, her or him? We go back to the original question. How can he make a vow to go to contract out of his obligation? So you might ask, he means if it's true what you just said that we interpret words. So the whole Ramun Rabbanu said, if the halakh like Ramun Amara, who said, Name Ara, Dom Ramun Amara, Yechoi Lisha, Shari Rabbanu, who can say to the husband, Aini Nazainiz, Ve Aini Oisa. I don't want you to feed me and I don't want to do anything. Everything I do to you is on my ain't Why do we say that you don't have to cancel? Lema let us say, since she can say, since she can say, I will not, um, don't feed me and I won't do, is Nasa becomes Kimisha a medicine as if she says to him, Let's interpret the words when she says that um, when, uh, when she may need it, that all my earnings should be also to you. Let's interpret what she meant was, I'm going to earn the money for myself and you don't feed me anymore. Ella, Ella, obviously, we don't say, um, we don't say, let's imagine, let's make believe. Ella, unless he clearly says, he has to clearly utter that. So therefore, you're right. So that's exactly what we're talking about here. We're talking about it here is what he said to her. Uh, he said to her, go get a job. No, the mission didn't bother telling us exactly the wording that he used. So when he made a vow, I'm not going to feed you. What he did say to her was, go out there and earn your own money. And, and that's what happened. So we're talking, but he, so we don't interpret. He said it explicitly. Says the Gemara, if we're talking about he made a vow. And therefore the vow lasts, you know, he's not letting her. He's not giving her the option of not working. 
only the whatever we had in the Mishnah for what she has to earn, you know, the five shkolim of weight of wool. And if, if, if um, and we say over here that beyond 30 days, he has to work and so on and so forth. And during those 30 days, he has to organize a pandas, a third party to feed her. The question is, if she's earning money, what do you have to organize a pandas for? If, we, if he clearly said to her, go out there, get a job, and I'm not going to feed for you, and feed you, why does he have to have a third party providing food? What's the role of the partner? She's earning money and she's making money. She's earning, but she's not earning enough. So therefore, you, to supplement that, the, the, the shortfall, you need the partner. So it goes back to the question. He has an obligation to provide for her. If, if he's not providing her fully, then he is breaching his obligations. How can this rule be valid? Even like Sabka, how does she do that? question goes right back. Then um, how can you make such a vow? Or Ravashi, the Maspek is the one you daily. He has, he, she earns enough for all the more important things, but the Aina Maspek is the one but she does not have enough for the small things. Says the Yamada, you know, small little food items, whatever. Says the Yamada, Hani Dwarim Tani, these small little things that you're talking about, what are we talking about? Either Gilbo, let's say, let's say dessert. If she's used to having dessert and we know that he has to provide for everything she's used to, her to Gilbo, then it becomes back to an obligation. How can he How can he uh, make a vow um, undermining his obligation? Be Eloid Gilbo, she's not accustomed to it. Now she decides she wants these things. And Paris Lamele, why are you forcing him to hire a third party to give her something that she wants? When he has no obligation, Manushik. If he has an obligation, then how can he make a vow? If he has no obligation, then why should he provide for it? What in her home when she grew up, she used to get, let's say, an appetizer before the meals. So that's something small, but she, that's how she starts the meals. She was used to that. When she got married, she gave it up. She said, "Look, out of love for you." Not a big deal. The Kamagawa Bahada, she's prepared to roll with him, and doesn't matter if she gets that or not. The Omnali Adi in the Panao, we're no longer to, sort of together. I won't go back to my the way it was. And you have to provide for me the way it was. The Omnali, remember, early Ima Vilayim. The Omnali, she says, Adi, until now, the lad Dartan, you didn't make it net that we had a very good rapport, a good relationship. Galgila Bahada, I was prepared to go with you wherever. The ends of the world. Now that you made a net and you're not sort of this, you, you know, you disavowed me, the limit to the about I find it difficult. I want my, I want my what I'm accustomed to. So therefore, in this case, he uh, she gets whatever uh, uh, she gets her own earnings, covered everything else except these things that she sort of gave up and now she wants it back. So he he can make a vow because it's not so much an obligation, but he has to get a third party to supplement and cover that. <clears throat> so he's a bit mature to it. So what's the chesed 30 days? Why up to 30 days you have to tolerate it and not beyond? So it was an interesting thing. They're a married couple. No one knows that there is a lack of shalom bias in this house. So for 30 days, they're not together. People don't, you know, are not aware of it. But it's not humiliating for her. Faith, but if it takes if this is going on for longer than 30 days, people eventually find out. Some of the people will hear about it that she's in this house and this house, and they're, not, they're never together. The Ziliba Milsa then is humiliating, and therefore, can she can't take it? Either you divorce me or we live together. You boys say, my other answer is okay, so that's one answer to explain why, on the one hand, there's no obligation, and on the other hand, he has to provide for her. So these are things that she's accustomed, small things that she's accustomed from her youth that she gave up, but now she's no longer prepared to give it up. Ibaisem, another answer is she did a They were only engaged. And he made the vow while they were engaged. And therefore, and, 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 and that's why the vow can take place. He doesn't really have an obligation to feed her. So the obvious question then is: so why in the world does he have to hire um, a third party? To feed her. So, me, Isla, or why do have to ask a third party? Me, Isla, Mazina, why have a third party? Tomorrow, I said, we're talking about like we learned in the beginning of the Sechta, he gives man, well, then this came the time to get married, 12 months expired, but for whatever reason, <coughs> they haven't got married yet. Now we learned, he gives man, well, then this, if they, the time came, the 12 months came, arrived, and they still haven't got married. He has to provide for her. This is Takanos Chachamim, and she can even eat Truma because, really, even as soon as you're going to get, you're able to eat Truma. It's only with the Rabban we had the two opinions because either Simpan or she'll bring it home. But after 12 months, he, um, he, he has to stop providing for her. So he gives her a separate room, and I'm worried that he'll share, share with her family. And by now, already, she know, he knows already all her uh, defaults, defects. Umayishna. In this case, the word, why, what's 30 days? The fact that they're living together, there's nothing wrong because they're, they're, they're only engaged. In fact, they shouldn't be living together. So what's the, what are people going to say? And they're not together. What are people going to find out? 
עד שלושה יום עובד שליח של חוסאי, תווה גלו עובד שליח של חוסאי, על דיפרם ריזון אל תגדר. The first 30 days, whoever this third person is doing a favor will take care of her. After 30 days, he gets tired and he won't, he won't take care of anyone, she feels insecure. Therefore, after 30 days, it's not a life and she has to divorce. He buys them a third answer is, שהיא דירה כשהיא ארוסה, the third answer is that he gave, he made a nether, And it was like, Rashi's whole cheshman here is very interesting. Rashi says in the second answer we just learned that Mahat he has no obligation. Therefore, the nether, he, it's only with the Rabbana that after 12 months he has to feed her. Therefore, the nether is valid. Because the nether, why is the nether valid? Because he has no obligation to feed her yet. Mahat Torah, it's only with the Rabbana. So the nether of the Torah is valid. But because with the Rabbana he has to feed her, therefore he has to get a third party involved. And it seems that once they're married, Rashi holds up Mahat he, uh, he has to feed her. And, um, and other Rishayim disagree, they hold Mahat Taita, you never really have to feed her. Anyway, the whole discussion right here. Tasis and other Rishayim. He buys him a third answer, which the mother is going to reject. So she did a Kishi Arusa, that he made a nether while she was engaged. And then when he saw she got married. So now the obligation of getting a third party is because she got married. When he made the nether, the Narusa, so the nether was a valid nether because he didn't have to feed her yet. But then they got married. Now he has to feed her. Therefore, you have to organize this particular partner. Says the Gemara, but Nisa, if she got married, knowing that there's a vow, how can she have complaints? You knew that he wasn't, she wasn't, he wasn't going to feed you. You accepted it. The Amra, she says, I thought I thought I can continue living this way with that nether in place. now, I can no longer live this way. Says the Gemara, one second. This kind of a logic doesn't work. When do we say this logic in a case where you couldn't really have known? Or when do we say this logic at least? Gabi Mumin, when it comes to uh, later on, we'll see if there were Mumin there, she can change her mind. Look, I thought I can, I can live with these Mumin, but now they're actually living together. I see we can't. But when it comes to food, I, um, did you, what, how did you think that you'd be able to live with a man who's not going to give you food? What were your thoughts? When it comes to Mumin, it's not normal to, you know, you think that it doesn't really affect me, it's to do with him. But then you didn't realize because you never were in a relationship before. You didn't realize how it impacts your relationship. Okay, it's a valid time that you change the mind. When it comes to food, as a person, you have to eat every day. What do you mean you thought that you can get married without having someone giving you food? And then what changed? Me, I mean, hachi, Much clearer, we go back to the original two answers we gave. Says you further, absolutely, you're going to be part of So, your most question I was going to be what we did raise before. How can you have a partner? He made a vow, he won't give her anything. Then he gets a third party that he, it seems from here, that he gives him food to pass on to her. So, how does that help? He's a, he's a shaliach representing him, he's breaching his vows. He doesn't ask this person, doesn't make him a shaliach, appoint him as a shaliach. He says the following statement If anybody wants to give him food to my wife, you, it won't cost you anything. Another one day, one day I'll reimburse you. So you know you're not my shaliach, really, because I just opened it up to everybody. And whoever volunteers, you're a volunteer. Just I'll reimburse you one day. So you're not acting on my behalf. Says the Gemara, what are you talking about? We find this very expression does make you a shliach. If you go ahead and you decide to carry out my instructions, it's as if you're my shliach. Where do you find that? By a get. You're going to tell me it's not considered a shliach, but now we learned in the Mishnah. Mishnah, you must have reversed. Somebody was tossed into a pit. But Omar, and he didn't know if he'll ever get out. So he screamed out, Kola, Shemea, Kola. Anybody can hear this voice. Yichtev get, Yichtev, please write a get to my wife. And, and 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 so on. And the din is, and in order to write a get for her husband, you have to only the husband can do it because of an asin. So whoever does it has to act as a shliach, as a proxy. And it says, had anybody hears it, they can have a right to write to get and give it over. So we see from here, even though all he said was whoever wants to do it, do it. And it's considered as if you made a shliach. Think about a hachi hashta. How can you compare? Hasam kama there he says, yichtoif. There he says, whoever hears it, I want you to write. So he's clearly appointing that person, whoever hears it, to be my shlich. Did he say, I want you to give food? He just said, call us on. If anybody gives food, I'll reimburse you. So that means you're not really acting as my shlich. You're more like a volunteer. And I'm going to give you money for it as a gift. Says the Gemara, the Gemara, there's a fire on Shabbos. 
we permitted you to say, because we made certain leniencies, we know a person is, is, is going to be in a very confused state when he sees his house going up in fire. And he might end up doing Chil Shabbos of the traders. So we make certain leniencies. And one of them is, if he says, anybody who extinguishes the fire, will not lose out. But the Laker will not lose out. In other words, I'm going to read verse this person. So, um, um, so he allows it. So it seems, but like the, the, this allowance of saying anybody else do it, you can do it. No, you're not acting in my shlich. You're not appointed shlich on Shabbos to do malacha. But in this case, he didn't appoint a shlich. He just said anyone does it. And it says clearly this is limited to the case of a fire because you're confused. Lemute, and what are we excluding? My love, lemute kagamna. Any other case where you just say anybody wants to do it, could do it. You won't, you won't lose out. It, it wouldn't work because you are mamish my shlich. Only on Shabbos, we were only on Shabbos by, by a fire. We relax this law. So we see that even over here, if he says anybody wants to feed my wife, you will be acting as my shlich. So you want to no, the muti shari the Shabbos. No, we're not discussing things outside of Shabbos. It's only when it comes to Shabbos. Shabbos, which is very, very strict, and we don't want even a goy to act as a shlich. So therefore, we don't even want you to say anybody does this malach for your Shabbos, you know, won't be affected. It's, um, and only by a fire because you're confused. But in other thing, not Shabbos, which is not so strict, you're not my shlich. You know, for example, by Nadarim, we're not going to say that. <clears throat> Um, mostly, but that was the question. It says, Let's say Reuben and Shimon, and Shimon made a vow. I don't have anything to do with Reuben. And Be'en Lama Yechel, but Shimon is very poor and he has nothing to eat. And Reuben has a chmonis. I mean, imagine Shimon made a net that I don't have anything to do with you. And then Reuben sees Shimon and he has such compassion for him, despite the fact that you made this vow, which is a terrible vow, had a chmonis. And he wants to give him food, but he can't because Shimon made a vow. And it looks like Shimon doesn't want to unravel the vow. Well, he has no there's no other eating there that he can go to a bezin and, and, and undo his vow. He's allowed to go to his storekeeper that he's that he knows well. But Yemale said, look, each plain he mudan many Shimon made a vow that he doesn't want to have any benefit from me. What should I do? So he doesn't say to the guy, feed him and I'll pay you. He says, I don't know what to do. So the storekeeper understands the hint. Who knows in loy? So the storekeeper goes to Shimon <coughs> and uh, and uh, and feeds him, and then he goes back to Reuben and he gets paid. Um, so Hachidish, it seems clear from here, he didn't even say, "Oh, whoever feeds Shimon, you know, won't lose out." That's too strong. That sounds like a shliach. But just just here, he's, he's even less than that. He just says, "Oh, what's Shimon going to do?" You know, how, like like you know, on Shabbos sometimes you have to hint to a guy. It's dark in the room. Like, what's Shimon going to do? And, and the storekeeper then understands, you know, what he's trying to say. So we see that even Kolazan doesn't work. Our Kolazan in the lie. Doesn't work. So what are you telling me? What are you telling me that he made a vow to his wife, but he said, whoever feeds my wife won't lose out. No, it sounds from here that that would be considered tantamount to appointing him as a shliach. Well, no, you misunderstood. I don't have to say that. For sure, if you just say open, you make a, a, this clarion call. Call has son, ain't a mafsi, whoever feeds the shimon doesn't lose out. Who are you talking to? Nobody in particular. You're talking to the whole world. And then somebody volunteers and gives shimon money and you're going to reimburse him. There's nothing wrong. For sure, that's good because you didn't appoint a shliach. He's a volunteer. And then you're nice, you're kind enough to give him a gift, whatever the value is. I will high in this case here is worse because you went to a specific person, keeping the rug last night, since this is the storekeeper that you always buy food from, and you, you said this thing, it's, it's almost um, clear, not only what you're implying, it sounds more like you're explicitly telling him, feed him and I'll take care of you. As if he gave him a directive, I want you to feed Shimon. And as the as if he told him clearly, I want you to go and feed Shimon. That even so, even though this is my storekeeper, and even though it's as if I'm telling him clearly, go feed Shimon, you're allowed to because I didn't tell him openly go feed Shimon. I just hinted it, and that's a hint. But if I just say whoever wants to can do it, you're a volunteer. You're not actually at all, and I'm going to reimburse you. Uh, this last case that we just spoke about, let's say if Reuben is, 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 is forbidden from Shimon, so I think the Shimon, Shimon does not want to eat, so he goes to the storekeeper that he's accustomed to, and he tells the storekeeper, each plane would have many Shimon, he doesn't have any benefit from me, when he did my ass, I don't know how to help him, who knows, and so, so the storekeeper gives him a love and then he goes to Reuben and he collects his money. Um, Base, uh, let's say, base of Libnus has the house, it has to be built to be there to leave the rough fence, it has to be repaired. So, they leave so his field is ready to be harvested. And again, the guy can't afford it. And Ruben is the only one who could pay for it, but he made a net. I don't want Ruben to have anything to do with me. He goes to his workers, and each plane would have known many shimmer. Doesn't have any benefit for me. And he needs help. I don't know what to do. 
And hey, no, see, it's the same thing. The workers go on their own. He never instructed them to do it. And the Chiddush says, even though he's talking directly to these workers who work for him, so they know exactly that you know he's their, he's their employer. So they know exactly what he's trying to say. They can still go. And then they go back to him and say, pay us. We're traveling on the road. We're traveling on the road. And Reuben and Shimon was there. Shimon doesn't have what to eat. And he made a net that I don't want to have anything to Reuben. So what Reuben does, he gives some of the food to a third party as a gift to yours. And then, and then, um, then this person can, uh, Shimon can go to that third party and take the food need because it's something to do with Reuben. Reuben is no longer owner of the food. He gave it to a third party. Mutant's all right. What happened in Shemach? There are only two people out there in the wilderness, and Shimon is dying from starvation. And Reuben and, and Shimon obviously cannot be matinetic because no one was there. What should uh, Reuben do? Meniach Agabi Yaseli makes it hefty, places on a rock of, or Agabi Geder on a fence, and a stone on a fence, a boulder on a fence. Boim, and he says, Hadeim of Karin, Luchom Mashiach. I'll make it hefty, whoever wants it. And then Shimon is not taking any food from better from Reuben, it's from hefty. Alonaitul the Eichel, um, Mutant permitted. Uh, in Gemara and Dome, we actually have a machlek is how Hefker works. If I make something Hefker ownerless, does it become ownerless straight away, or does only when it enters the person, if another person comes and takes it, that's when it becomes his. If you learn another person comes and takes it, that's when it becomes his, is um, it might be a, a little bit of a problem because it's like he's getting it from Ruben. And here it sounds like it's Hefker first, and only afterwards he took it. it sounds like that we're following the view that it becomes Hefker straight away. But Abiyasi Isa. Rabiesi asses. And Rabiesi is the one who says that it's Hefker until the person uh, takes it. And, 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 and maybe that's why he asses this thing over here by the Hefker, because it's as if Shimon is getting it from Reuben. Oh, my Rav um, says, uh, Rav, um, my time is Rabiesi. What's the last Rabiesi? What's the Maisa based Chayden? There's a, a father and a son, and the father said, I don't have anything to do with my son. And the son made a big wedding, and he wants his father to come. And he wants his father to participate in the meal. So he gave the me he gave it to a friend. He said, "Look, I'm giving you the entire wedding, all the food in the wedding. I'm giving it to you, my friend, and I want you to make sure my father should be able to eat." So his friend, who was not a very nice person, said, "You know what? If the food, if the entire food of this wedding belongs to me, I'm donating it to the base of Mikdash. I'm donating it to Hegdish." So it became a big drama. He's a guy's making a wedding, and he he only wants his father to be able to eat, so he gave it to his friend, trusting him, and his friend then turned around and gave the Hegdish. So the Gemara said, any matona, that's not like a matan's based chayda, it's not a matana. In other words, since, since uh, you never, your intention clearly was that that person should not be able to make a Hegdish, you wanted the person only to have it so that your father can eat it. It's not a valid matana. What's a, to consider a valid matana? What's a criteria of valid matana? That, that the recipient owns it completely, and if they want to give it to Hegdish, they have the right to. They can do whatever they want with it. So therefore, because you're limiting his rights, it's not like so really. It's not like you gave it to your friend, and therefore your father couldn't eat from it. So with Goyz, the same thing here. Since the only reason why you're putting it over there is so that your this person Shimon should be able to eat from it. So uh, we're worried that in other cases that it's not going to be a valid matana. And as a result of this, the rush and all the Rishonim and Sechta Sukkah talk about how can it be that an Esrit, you can give it a matana manas lahavza. You did then his rubber says that by an Esrit, you can give it to somebody and say, give me this Esrit because it has to be yours in order to fulfill the mitzvah, but on the condition that you return it back to me. So the question, so the rush never asks, we know, call matana. Any matana, like a matana is not about matana. So since the person receiving it cannot make it hegdish because if it, he has to be able to give it back to you. And if you cannot it can make it hegdish, this is not a valid matana. So how can a matana have the word best? This is something that all the Rishayim talk about, the Ktos and Sivir, everybody, all the Akhrayim talk about, fascinating subject. Can you make a hegdish for a limited amount of time or, or so on? Anyway, let's go for a few more lines. Remember? Rabbi Huda said, be Yisrael, one hegdish, and by a koyin, we give Two chedashim. So the Gemara, Hainu Tanakama. So what's the difference? One chedash. They both agree. Tanakama says one month we give him before we compel him to divorce her, and and, and we do the same thing. So Abayi said the obvious difference is you're right. When it comes to the Yisrael, it makes no difference. The difference is by a coin. Abayi mean, introduces the idea by a coin we give an extra extra month. Amar Abayi Kahenes Oslash Min Ho Chedash is regarding a Kahenes. Rav Amarav says Chedash Mole the Chedash Chaser Ika Benayu. No, even by Yisrael there's a difference. What do you need a third day month? Um, uh, or is it th always 30 days, or he means the month regarding regardless of where, whatever the month is, the chaydish. So if a month is 29 days, it's 29 days, and the month has to be 30 days, it is 30 days. Says <clears throat> Okay, we'll stop here. And here starts uh, the new